And welcome back, guys, to another episode of Tristan's Reef. So today I'm going to do a long overdue tank update, and I think it'll be a good one. So let's start with equipment updates. So to start, I have added a secondary chamber to my calcium reactor, and this is to help with the plummeting pH values in my reef. So prior to the second chamber, my pH was averaging right around 7.6 to 7.5, which I felt was a bit low. So after adding the chamber to decast excess CO2, my pH raised to right around 7.8, 7.9 on a good day. I also gathered the cojones to drill through my new house to run my airline outside for my skimmer. So now my pH hovers right around 8.2 to 8.3, regardless of how many air breathers are in the house. See, I told the reef madre it was either she let me drill the holes in the house or we put grandma in a home and trade the children to their grandparents. After the well-deserved beating, she let me put a hole in the house, which I figure is a great compromise. The cryptic refugium is doing great. The mangroves are growing and putting off new leaves, and every time I look in there, I'm reminded of the creatures growing in there, and while I'll never put my hand in there ever again, regardless of how much money anyone pays me. So regarding the refugium, I was able to change my light to a Kessel clone and my channel has absolutely exploded. See my 880 did okay, but this new COB grow light easily slaps it around. I actually did a video on this light and how much it costs, which is right around 30 bucks. And honestly, it's made a really big difference with my refugium. So as for other equipment upgrades, my wife has promised to buy me a Kamoa pump for my calcium reactor if I'm a good boy. and. You know, she'll give it to me for Christmas, I guess. As for new livestock, that's where things get a little bit interesting. A trip to my local LFS, Nemo's Reef, led me to purchase the most expensive hermit crab I have ever seen. It's called a staghorn hermit, and he now lives in the refugium. And I'll probably never see him again. So I figure it's 15 bucks well spent, I think. Uh, now onto the display. So as many of you know, I had a live stream recently where I gambled with my entire tank and dosed flatworm exit, and this was to take care of a red planaria and acro eating flatworm problem that I had recently discovered. Now I know flatworm exit doesn't actually kill acro eating flatworms, but it does piss them off really, really well. But I'm happy to say that it's been a few weeks and I have dosed the tank three times, thus far with flatworm exit and twice with perch. This seems to have taken care of my flatworm issue, but just to be sure, I have also upped my flatworm predator livestock thanks to Upscale Aquatics anniversary sale. So during my treatments, I went ahead and added one Melanaris wrasse, one green chorus wrasse to match my yellow chorus wrasse, three oriental leopard wrasses, and one possum wrasse. And since I was on a wrasse buying binge, I also picked up a rosy scale wrasse, two Hawaiian flame wrasses, a solarensis wrasse, and one Temaniki fairy wrasse. And since I was in the process of eating through the rest of my children's college fund, I also scored four beautiful bimaculus antheas to go ahead and match my lyratil antheas, and they are absolutely gorgeous. All are doing well, fat, healthy, and other than the occasional chase, aggression seems to be contained and distributed evenly. With my flatworm issue under control via chemicals and predators, I have not seen a single one for quite some time. Regardless, I'm going to stay on watch and try to ensure that I never have that problem again. I feel like my tank has hit the Jesus water stride. And what that means for me is that with the exception of the softies, all of my SPS corals are bright, colorful, and easily takes my breath away when the blues turn on. And I feel at this point, I can pretty much keep anything I want to put in the tank as far as SPS goes. Overall, I'm quite happy with how the tank is progressing, and I can't wait to show you guys what I'm doing with my new 60 gallon softy LPS tank. So stay tuned for that video later on this week. So some of you have asked why I'm removing all of the softies from my display to a new one, and the answer is actually pretty simple. See, while my softies are not dying in my main display, they're also not living their best life. My lighting is too intense, my tank is too clean, and the flow is too much to really give them an opportunity to flourish. Moving them to a purpose-built tank is simply the best option I had available to keep everyone happy. 
So with that guys, I'm going to wrap this up, but thanks a lot as always for checking in. Please like and subscribe and I'll definitely catch you guys on the flip side.